I would like to make some remarks about some themes which are related to Dhrupad as a form of uh, Hindustani music making, which is uh, which is in circulation today and uh, has varying popularity amongst various people. Usually, uh, one begins with the origin. So, actually, I don't. I don't consider that the word origin can be really associated with the emergence of any musical form. I feel that musical, any musical form is the result of a crystallization process. And that process takes long years, long centuries perhaps. And no single person or no single period can be credited with the origin of a musical form as such. On this background, I would like to say that Rupert actually is a consolidation of a process which is described as Anibadha Sangeet and Nibadha Sangeet. From that Nibadha Sangeet, I am referring to Nibadha Sangeet. And Nibadha Sangeet actually uh, suggested the possibility of pre-composing to a great extent all the important elements of music making in the world. Now it has definitely certain advantages that when you pre-compose, the resulting whole can be aesthetically very tightly woven and in that sense it is a completed whole. It doesn't leave much to chance and it's a perfectly crafted and that's why uh, whenever uh, musical forms crystallize in that tendency of uh, Nipadha Sangeet, all the elements like for example the Swara element or the Laya element, the Tala element, the theme element, the pronunciation element, the use of language, use of instruments, tempo use, that change of tempo introduced, all these are taken as a whole and that's why they are crafted and their relationship with each other turns out to be very significant, very meaningful, purposeful. And in that sense it becomes a very uh, well crafted piece of music. And I feel that Nibadha Sangeet was a very important phase in Indian music making. And it suggested to us that music had a larger relationship with other life areas and that's why it needed to be composed. For example, if you feel that art music has a relationship with human life cycle, for example, supposing that you want to suggest that there are uh, three cycles in India to which music has responded to, not only art music, but all categories of music. In fact, art music has become art music because it has stopped responding to all the three cycles that I mentioned. First cycle is birth and death. Second cycle is day and night. The third cycle is seasons. All Indian music distinguishes itself by its ability and intention to respond to these three cycles. What I am suggesting is that if you want to have responses to all the three cycles through music, then music has to be pre-composed. And at one point of time, Nibadha Sangeet, of which Drupad is a crystallization, was interested in responding to all the three cycles. And that's why you had a compositions, birth, death, birth, initiation, coronation, marriage, first night, first birth of the first son, whatever. I mean you had a composition dealing with all these themes and there were occasions which were, which were result of response to the three cycles. And this definitely needed a kind of pre-composed attitude towards music. This is how Rupert must have resulted into a form 
which only consolidated what has been gone, what has been there before. For example, people have always expressed a kind of interest in 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 imagining a relationship between Dhruvas and Dhruva Pada. Now we know that terminologically Pada always refer to the textual aspect, the world aspect, the linguistic aspect of music. Now Dhruva in Bharata, again it is very interesting that Dhruva are pre-composed. Dhruvas have been placed in certain definite dramatic situations. They have been uh, placed in the context of the musical parameters too. What kind of tempo, what kind of tal, what kind of meter, what kind of language, everything has been mentioned. And that's why, in a way, Drupada as we sing it today, or Drupada as it came into vogue, was in a way continuation of this tendency of having a Nibhadra Sangeet. Now that particular Dhruva was a Nibhadra Sangeet in dramatic context. The moment you take it out, out of that dramatic context, it retains these characteristics. Because Nibhadra Sangeet in a way again was trying to respond to the three cycles which I have mentioned. Earlier. So I feel that Dhrupada as it is, has a close tendency to imitate prototypes which were formulated in the Nipadha Sangeet tradition. So, to say that its origin is attributed to single person or a single period doesn't seem to be acceptable to me. At the same time, I am also trying to visualize a situation now that perhaps during the 15th-16th century, after Jati Gayana has gone and all that, after Murchana has also disappeared from the scene, after establishing a kind of Swaragrama which had principle of tonality as its basis, and where you are getting all the musical intervals in one octave, this was the state, I mean, as far as melody was concerned. <clears throat> as far as rhythm was concerned, the two-faced drum, rhythm continued to be the prototype of the language which was formulated for all other rhythm instruments. Just as Veena remained the prototype of all instruments for which language was formulated, language was developed. So during the 15th, 16th centuries, I visualize a situation where Nibhadra Sangeet was the main, uh, main, uh, uh, main influence over music making, but at the same time, now music was moving out of ritualistic context. And when I say it is moving out of ritualic context, I am suggesting that it, a part of it continued to be under the ritualist context, but part of it liberated itself. And I am not immediately jumping to the conclusion this was due to court influence. I am saying secularization processes are not definitely tied down to being a court music. There are other areas where it becomes secular. In fact, I am going to suggest that the moment you talk of Drupad, why do you have to talk of Dhamma? Interesting. Because Dhamma is a secular festival. Dhamma, a holy festival, has nothing to do with ritual per se. Or aristocracy. Right. And I suggest, I also suggest that any form which carries the name of a Tala name is a secondary form. And you will see that only Dadra and Dhamar happen to be these forms. No major form will be named after the Tal in local music. And it suggests that, you know, there is this pair thing, Rupat Dhamar. Now, it appears to me that in Rupat, singing per se, 
you might have fields which are dealing with courtly life or whatever. But the moment you come to Dhamma, you are singing the holy and secular things. Even tempo-wise, you will see that it's a different kind of music making. I am suggesting that Dupad at that time, being a Nibhatra form, wanted to respond to various life stimuli and that's why it had to gather together all these forces under one rubric. But the original tendency was Nibhatra Sangeet. It's also interesting to note that while people have been saying that perhaps Mam Singh Tomar was the main force who shaped Drupal, people are also saying that Haveli Sangeet, which is again a Nibhatra Sangeet, was a contemporary form. I am suggesting that perhaps, you know, as people have already argued about it, that if Haveli Sangeet is in praise of Krishna, there was a contemporary form which is known as Vishnu Pada. Now people say that people wanted to counter the influence of Madhura Bhakti and Radha Krishna. And that's why they wanted to have Vishnu Pada. And you have Mansin Tomar coming, coming up with uh, secular models. But all these were Nibhadra Sangeet. So even within Nibhadra Sangeet you had these three tendencies. And all these tendencies suggest a kind of uh, interchange of forces which were leading you to something. But the tendency, main tendency was Nibhadra This is the first thing that I would like to say that as far as origin of Rupa is concerned, no single person, no single period can be given that credit. And actually Rupa was a crystallization. And it emerged from the Nibhata Sangeet tradition. And as the earlier Nibhata Sangeet was more drama oriented and also more ritualistic, this was an attempt to come, come out of it and extend the area of operation for this tendency of music making. This is as far as the origin is concerned. At this point, <coughs> you said something about drama. Do you have any comments in the same context with what we hear as the soul form in Drupad for the Tirvat or Chaturam or the Niratak Shabdam Chakai Tarama Sarkastate? Do they also belong to the same secularizing tendency uh, in your opinion? Uh, what, what is the historical context of these? Have you given any thought to this? So, Tarana, for example, you know, I mean, again, it's very interesting that. Uh, Tarana definitely carries association of meaningless sound syllables. So there are arguments for and again. People are saying that no, perhaps they are Persian words and they have been distorted or original they were words pertaining to this particular religion and they have been distorted. At the same time, use of meaningless syllables is a very old tendency because Tena Shabda tendency means, you know, Tena Shabda are mirror Shabda and that's why they are significant. I mean, one has to make a distinction between meaningfulness and significance. Things can be meaningful because they are, they, because they correspond to one-to-one -one relationship. When significance, much larger, much vaguer. And that's why all the mantras, DJ mantras, are in meaningless terms. They are meaningless sounds. Because that liberates you from the day to day world. So it is not the meaning, but the meaning of meaning that is. Yes, significance. That's why I am using two terms here. Meaning and significance. You can have a dictionary of meanings. You cannot have a dictionary of significance. And that's where I think Tena Shabda tendency is important. You definitely needed meaningless words because you wanted to suggest something much bigger. And this has come right from the beginning. And I don't think that this is anything to do with Indian culture per se. All over the world, whenever people wanted to convey, which is much more than what language can, they have only used language as a abstract matrix of your sounds. And abstracted sounds and sounds and sounds. Sound is important, not meaning. Historically, is there any 
indication available for the inclusion of soul and tirvat and chaturanga and these kinds of things into the deeper tradition? Now, uh, we very well know that uh, chaturanga, the form we, we call today chaturanga, was known as chaturmukha. And this is found in Bharatnaka. Now you will see that slowly there is again a very interesting uh, secularization of terms here. And the Chaturmukha, the immediate connotation is of Brahmadeva. The moment you come to Chaturanga, it is Anga, aspects. So you are now secularizing it. And that's why one again sees this shift. That even though it had, you know, uh, the Sai Yantra, etc., etc., et the same four things, four aspects of it. But actually you are liberating that form. But this was also a pre-composed form. And that is why it belongs to the Drupad family. That's why it comes there. It has a place. It has an inbuilt provision for it. Because all these are the results of Dibhattas and tendency. Pre-composed music. And pre-composed music can have associations with other life areas because that can be really crafted out. You can decide on it. And that's why I feel that this is a very legitimate drive to connect music with other life areas. And then in that way, if you have freedom of expansion, thematic expansion, you might have to limit your freedom of musical elaboration. Therefore, transition into time. Next time. Now, uh, again, uh, we will see that even if we take the present corpus of musical forms in Hindustani music, we have we have uh, groupers as such. Then we have groupers which are slightly liberated. Means. Then. You know, we have uh, khayals which are akin to drupas. So again, all these are interchanges of influences. The moment you feel that this form has consolidated itself and it is becoming rigid, immediately there is a dialectic movement going away from, trying to liberate from its constraints. For example, if we have, say, in drupas, we have four two. We know right from Ibrahim Adil Shah, there were there there are there are uh, instances where there were forms in which only three tooths were used. Later on, you come to khayals which had three tooths, and then manja has now disappeared, and we have only two tooths. So, resulting from Rupert to khayal, there was an intervening stage where khayals used to have three. And groupers also used to have three. So obviously what we are trying to do is liberate from the groupers. And one way of doing it is to change the contour of the form. So instead of have, having four aspects, four two, have three, that's the first step. You also see that in Thayar there is what we know as Sadhara. Now that Sadhara is akin to groupers. But this is called Langada groupers. There is also a Langada grouper. I mean, I distinctly remember the others are telling me, I mean, I have learned the same composition in two actions, two, two ways. One is Drupad, the other one is Khyal. For example, this well-known Lajit Pancham thing. <laughs> So I think this is a maintenance sheet. 
निबद्ध मिला है तो अनिबद्ध करो और अनिबद्ध करने की बात ये लगता है उसको फॉर्म कम होता जा रहा है तो बना उसको दूसरे तो यू नो आई थिंक दिस इज अ डायनेमिक काइंड ऑफ प्रोसेस दिस इज डायनेमिज्म इसेंशियल डायनेमिज्म दैट यू डिसाइड दैट दीज आर दी पैरामीटर्स ऑफ दिस फॉर्म बट द मोमेंट यू आर डिसाइडिंग दैट इज अ काउंटर मोमेंट विच इज इमीजिएटली इन प्रोग्रेस and that's where music lives i think and that's why you know the moment people started composing groups in a well structured form there was also a moment to liberate themselves from that and khayal is a result of this anibaddha process you know amar song nibaddha to anibaddha you will get a whole you know a whole um, group of tendencies operating so if we look at it historically and from sadaran to The obvious decline of Khyal, uh, of Drupad. They have coexisted almost for 200 years, right? And it is bound to coexist. And I feel that you know one of the things which I uh, always put forward as a possibility is that uh, there is nothing like uh, death of a musical form in performing career. It becomes it becomes subterranean. It goes in another category of music. For example, you know, I always believe that to talk of art music in context of art music is not going to help us unless you know what is happening in religious music, unless you know primitive music, folk music, popular music. Unless you have five categories of music in front of you, you will be able to talk about any of these. And this is very much relevant in India because all these five categories are living traditions in India. I mean, when people outside say traditional music of India, I feel for all for us, all the five tra- are traditions. So, what are which is the tradition you are talking about? Now, before we are talking about art music tradition, but same tendencies have prevailed in religious music. Too. What is Haveli music? Haveli Sangeet. And why is it that Haveli Sangeet? Some uh, compositions are never elaborated. Because they are tied up with rituals, so no, there is a closer connection with other life area. That's why they are not allowed to have freedom in musical elaboration. There is a compensation for that. That music seems nearer to people because they are tied on to a particular theme which is near to that other area of life. Why the Ashta Chaps have all those Sora Shringars, and why the Ashta Chaps have particular daily hours and? <coughs> This is because you are tying up with other areas of life very closely. Because the temple has a particular yeah, right. biological. So you, that's right. So you are tying yourself up with other life areas. This is very important, and that's why the moment Khayal comes on the scene, we are now uh, changing the mode of music making. We are moving from nibbadh to anibbadh, and that makes the main difference. And then it's very interesting that we chose the term Khayal. Which itself means, you know, a free mind. Yes, imagination doesn't mean that Robert doesn't have imagination. It means that imagination is the moving force. The priority is to this, and not to the other areas, etc., etc., etc. And you will see immediately that even in chaos, why do we have Mubarak Bali? Why do we have seasonal songs? Why do we have initiation? Because you are again feeling that if music becomes too abstracted, it may not have any relevance to contemporary life. And I have interesting evidence here, interesting in the sense that uh, it, it comes from a source which is uh, is very interesting. Rampur Nabab in 1904 or around. Or a bit later, have brought out five volumes of his own compositions in notation, in which he specifically mentions the pehle jano pe, janam pe, gaane hote the, wo ablut ho gaye. Isliye maine wo gaane leke music mein uska use kiya hai aur ye sab khayal wagera banaye. There is a person now who has seen that earlier tradition in its full swing. Feels that 
कॉन्टेम्पररी आर्ट म्युझिक इज मुव्हिंग अवे फ्रॉम अदर एरियाज ऑफ लाईफ वी कंपोज इज सॉंग्स अगेन अँड इव्हन नाव आय मीन इफ यू थिंक ऑफ कॉम्पोजिशन वॉट इज दॅट वॉट इज कंटेन्शन दॅट इज ड्रिफ्टिंग टुवर्ड एंटरटेनमेंट और ड्रिफ्टिंग टुवर्ड टू मच ऑफ अ परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट टू मच ऑफ अन ॲब्स्ट्रॅक्शन ओके टू मच ऑफ अन ॲब्स्ट्रॅक्शन इव्हन आय मीन इट इट वॉज बिकमिंग टू फॉर्मॅलिस्टिक Arabesque of sound, as he said. I don't think India believes in that. And that's why, you know, the moment you have something, I mean, you have instrumental music. It's very interesting. Instrumental music has progressed. Quotation marks, it has done a great deal to enrich the musical idiom. And if you ask any musician, he is still talking in terms of Gaiki. He is still talking in terms of what forms, forms which have been grown well in vocal music. Though they have their own forms, but they never talk of them in greater detail. Because they feel that this is abstracting the music from the mainstream of music. Mainstream of music is main because it is connected with other life areas. So there is an implicit logic here that music doesn't become too, too great if it is too much abstracted. Which means that the relationship with life areas is assumed to belong to the poetic form poetic form meaning language occasion explicit meaning not That's emotional content no, and abstract you know mubarak wadiya i mean it's very interesting darbari ka khayal mubarak wad i mean can you really say that it's a joyful khayal shaadi ke bare mein aisa koi gaega darbari mein condolence music lagta hai wo So textually it is indicating that its loyalty is towards other forms of life and relationship with it. Yahaan Aravest of sound mein ja raha hai, toh bilkul darwari alag ja raha hai. So this is basically it appears to be a contradiction. So there is, what you are saying is there is a certain guilt associated with abstraction. There is, yes. Uh, yes, I mean it's a well good, well good observation. And perhaps you know, uh, people would say that perhaps this is also a nostalgia. That at one point of time music had a closer relationship with life. And it's very interesting that earlier performance ka model bhi dekho. We are digressing a bit but baith ke gana hota tha tab sunne wale kaha hote thi? Within hand shaking distance hote thi. You are surrounded by your audiences. It's only when the Britishers came and the auditoria were built that there was that no man's corridor, no man's land came in between the listener and the music maker. Nei to aisa lagta hi nahi tha. Jaisa proscenium stage aaya hamare yahan, to hamara natak badal gaya pura. Vaise hamara music bhi badal gaya. It's very interesting. At the same time, people wanted to have picture galleries. Pehle hamare galleries kahan thi? पेंटिंग की एक्जिबिशन के लिए गैलरी नहीं कोई करता था कोई म्यूरल होता था वाड़े पे होता था दरवाजे पे होता छत पे होता था या रंगोली निकलती थी कुछ भी होता था बट इट हैज अ क्लोजर कनेक्शन बट वेन दिस वो स्टार्टेड एवरी आर्ट स्टार्टेड मूविंग टूवर्ड्स मोर एंड मोर एक्सट्रैक्शन एंड नेचुरल दर वॉज अगेन अ प्रोसेस नो वी वॉन्ट टू एस्टैब्लिश रिलेशनशिप So khayal is very interesting. The khayal all the time is playing a hide and seek with this aesthetic, you know, perfection which only means sound-wise and etc. etc. No, meaning-wise it is suggesting something else many a times. And uh, naturally when coming back to this relationship between khayal and Drupad, definitely Drupad epitomizes Nibadda Sangeet. and khayal epitomizes and it is a and i have i have now i am reading dl roy and dl roy's comment on all the musicians he had heard from north and south from 1924 to 35 or something he has revised that in 1950s so he naturally stands by what he has written there He has strongly criticized 
अल्लाह बंदे एंड ऑल दी ग्रुप ऑफ सिंगर्स उस्तादी गाना करके वी हैव स्ट्रांगली क्रिटिसाइज इन से दे आर ओनली सिंगिंग ग्रामर दे आर नॉट इन स्पीट अबाउट देम देयर इज नो इमोशन इन दैट म्यूजिक एंड इट कांट स्टैक ऑब्वियसली ही इज आल्सो रेफरिंग टू लखनऊ कॉन्फ्रेंस देयर भाखंडे जी वाज प्रेजेंट and he is mentioning why this man should be given a medal and why that man was given a medal putting it in black and white saying that no dupat doesn't stand a chance but the argument that has been put forward by rajananda is that the quote unquote perversion of dupat into an unpleasant form of music was it desperate attempt to compete with the growing khyal influence and what bhakandi ji has said himself also observes it has become a pushti with akhada bhai with the pakhavaj do you accept uh, is is that a logical development of the tendency general tendency towards abstraction which took form the dupadias who are unable to adapt their singing to the khyal style probably militated against khyal by making their music more cerebral because more more like a means more cerebral you know dropper as it was structured couldn't have done anything else and that's why you know the necessity of liberating that from that form i mean you sing it in certain talat you sing only with certain instruments You sing only of certain themes. You sing only in certain ragas, and of course, it's very interesting. No females singing Gopal till recently. Just said no females used to play tabla. No females used to play shemai. Now all these are, in a way, offshoots of a cultural atmosphere which determines. But then they are all of them are related to each other. If you build up a very masculine style of singing, then naturally females won't take to that. Not that they are not able to do the like her. That's not the point at all. The point is that you are building up that that uh, that form towards a very masculine statement of music. Then why should they be interested in that? On the other hand, you know, I mean, I also feel that. If a uh, khayal was setting up an alternative model of music making in presence of Drupal, khayal presenting an, an alternative, alternative model. model of music making, which accentuated tendencies which were not allowed to prosper in Drupal. So in a way, both these forms. I mean, we are only talking of two forms. Actually, this is not defensible position. We have to talk them, of them in a perspective. But making it simpler, but yes, uh, are you con- are you saying that these these are contrasting forms, or are we saying that they they epitomize two tendencies? Uh, they do. As I said, Nibbutta and Anibbutta is a very good formulation because that is how how Indian musical forms have come into being. But now I think the moment khayal becomes a prominent form, a dominant form, I think we should talk about what a dominant form tries to be. Firstly, dominant form attracts all kinds of performers towards it. Secondly, dominant form tries to assimilate musical tendencies of other forms. Thirdly, dominant forms allow, in the initial stages, enough freedom to individuals to express themselves. Fourthly, dominant form allows a distinction between the larger disciplinary model of a gharana and style of a particular individual. And this has happened in case of khayal when Rupa then. Khayal were moving actively in the field of Indian music making. That Khayal was becoming a dominant form in these many respects. And now 
one has to see our mind. One has to uh, see that this doesn't become only a contrasting pair of forms, you know. You also have other forms contending. And that's, that makes it clear that what were the other two forms? Now you will see that Thumri was coming into being. Now people have argued that from Jhumri and Thumri and there are so many. So even Thumri is not a very recent phenomenon. At the same time, not Dhrupad, nor Kyal, nor Thumri are ancient. All of these are later phenomena. Medieval and onward. Yes. Medieval is also a great deal to say. Because I feel that Anibadda Nibadda formulation uh, became very well consolidated by the end of 16th, 17th century. And later on what we get is a more free movement of musical tendencies. And that's where now I feel that from religious music like Haveli, etc., etc., Gita Govinda tendency has already evaporated. But the content was attractive enough and that's why Kumri comes into being. We also see that uh, you know, by the time you have Persian influences coming in, they were coming in through poetry first. And you see that the form like Ghazal, slowly uh, evolving from a recitative music, from a recitation music, to a little singing and then now it is coming to a song form. Now at one point of time, there was a contradistinction between Kumri and Ghazal as it was between Rupad and Khyal. So now I am talking of four forms which again represent this kind of relationship. That whatever is Nibadda, you have Anibadda parallel to it. Ghazal being strongly Nibadda and Kumri yeah, being right. uh, Nibadda and Right, right. And again now Ghazal Sensing that Tumri is freer, Ghazal starts taking elements from Tumri. And that's why, you know, you share beach me gaane ki tradition you are. Wo se Poetically, you are not talking of a unit. Musically, you are talking of a unit in which you are interpolating poetic units so that you are free. So, again, from where this element comes? Then you will see that Begum after using shares in Tumri. Or Amit Khasar introducing Rubai in the Tarana. Tarana. So the no, Tarana is also more precomposed. That's right, yes. So all the while I think Indian musical forms are creating the situation where they are taking from each other and vying for the position of a dominant form. And Khayal became a dominant form because you know, it fulfilled those four criteria which I mentioned. It used to assimilate, it allowed you know, freedom to everybody, all kinds of performers started coming in. You know, group for Drupad there was a restriction that women won't sing. Khayal ke liye aso kuch nahi tha. All kinds of performers used to do that. All were able to sing. Similarly, no restriction about Raga, no restriction about Tara, no restriction about occasions. ये dominant form होने की वजह से in which context again coming back to Patkande ji's observation about Drupad perversion into that rhythmic obsession became dysfunctional because it was trying to music was trying to become rhythm you know I feel it was in a way logically built into the structure of Drupad that you had... That there was nothing else it could do. Haan. Ah, you know, form-wise, you know, ye jaisa form, arek form ka bhi genetic plan hota hai, kum gula. Haan. Ab Drupad ka form hi aisa bana tha, ki kus, for example, phele noom tum karo, usne saari alaap chari ho gai hai, uske baad aap shuru karenge, with the taal, with that particular instrument, like pakhavad, which is a sonorous instrument itself. 
ना पका हुए सीधा ठेका कभी बजी नहीं सकता तो हाउ आर यू गोइंग टू काउंटर दैट 